tell me what his name is? Tracy. Okay. Okay, go ahead, Grayson. Hi, my name is Grayson Baldwin. I am eight years old and I am in third grade at Liberty Peak Elementary. These last two years have been, of school have been very uncomfortable. I never thought school would need to be this way. I miss seeing my friends and teachers faces. It is really hard to learn when my teacher's face is covered. It is very it is very distracting having a mask on. My face all day. The mask make me feel sick and they make me feel hard it's hard to breathe. I am always worried that I will be the next kid in quarantine for exposure. I don't want to fall behind in school. COVID has taken so much of us kids. It is time for us to be able to live a normal life again. Please help us get our childhoods back. Thank you. Thank you, Grace. start off by asking you guys to not be on your phones this time, Mr. Zander, you specifically. Um, so we talked about what was going to happen with kids with allergies at school board meetings. And uh, you guys assured us that our kids with severe allergies would not have an issue. My son, he, uh, he's got severe allergies. He was sent to the nurse's office for coughing once. When he got there, the nurse wrote down on his little paper that he uh, coughed and he had nasal con congestion and that he uh, had a sore throat. Well, the sore throat was false. He did cough one time. And the kid can't breathe through his nose, never has been able to. Now I understand him getting sent to the office because those are symptoms. But when the parents call and explain this with documentation and that's still not accepted and I have to completely lose my mind on the principal, the nurse, I called Mr. Zander's office, I called uh, Putnam and had a meltdown on everybody because it's just not fair that our kids aren't being able to go to school. My daughter, the week before that was sent out of school for close contact. Didn't have an issue, whatever it is, what it is, I'm trying to be good with it. But here we are and I have documentation that my son has severe allergies and it's not accepted. We had to do an emergency visit to Dr. Gold's office just to get him back into school. Now, I feel that this is all mental child abuse. Um, there should be a lawsuit, and hopefully there will be. Uh, talking with Putnam, he said, or his aide said, that you're the one driving all this. Now, I realize you just got in here, whatever. Not my place, don't care. <laughs> um, now, there's been a lot of parents come in here and talk to you guys. And, you know, I, I have a couple of times and I don't feel like we're getting listened to. Um, I sent a couple of emails. I got a short response back from you, which was great. Thank you. Nothing from Ira. Um, now, I don't know what to do other than the fact that uh, I wake up at three o'clock in the morning, go to work, and I try to make it to this board meeting. Time. Thank you. Brent Kelly, a father of two in Wells Elementary, one in Wells High School. 
Um, I sat here a couple of times and I really wish the three that, had re that recently resigned were here because they were the only ones that gave a damn about our children. You guys could care less and shame on you for that. You guys have thrown our kids to the wolves. Like you said, uh, my daughter just got sent home for quarantine or she needs to be tested because she has allergies. It's a bunch of crud and they're getting threatened and coerced by teachers. You guys have given them ammunition to go ahead and come after these kids and fear monger them because they don't want to wear a mask. They're uncomfortable wearing masks and they shame them publicly. They, I just, I've had it. You guys don't deserve to be here, period. And I'm with him. I hope there is a class action on you. Hi, I just have a question for you. Is federal funding tied in any way to this mask mandate? No. No. So there's, it's you guys just implementing this. <laughs> Who, where is it coming from? I'm trying to understand where the rules are coming from that is based off the CDC, which is a private corporation. And who's who's making these rules? And your government. So it's in your interest, the governor's interest, so you're just following what he's saying, is that correct? So there's no real reason, I mean like Elko County can do what they want, right? Or is it a mandate's not a law? It hasn't been passed in legislation in the state, so. An emergency yeah. mandate submitted by the government has the same authority as a law. No, it really? no, doesn't. Does Please do not disrupt like that again, or I will clear the boardroom. <laughs> Mr. Zander was giving a reasonable response that is actually what we, is correct, and that's where we are from here. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Carla Wilbur. Carla Wilbur, I have um, two children at Mountain View Elementary in third and fourth grade. Um, nice to see you guys. Looks like you're already kind of uh, getting the heat. Um, to follow up what he was just uh, speaking on, um, so we know that uh, you take orders from the governor, right? So as far as we're all concerned, if you're not a part of the resistance, you are complicit, okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's how we're looking at you. That's how the entire world is looking at everybody in leadership. And if the governor is the only person making decisions, I'm curious to know what exactly you do. What do you do? Hmm? Because we've got kids on quarantine, we've got working parents that have no way of taking care of their kids when they're home. None of your rules make sense. There's no logic behind any of this. And if you actually think that any of this is about health and safety, you're out of your mind at this point. And I have nothing, like, we are so done with you and the school board and the district. And you say up here, learning for all, it's learning for those who are willing to follow the rules, that's it. Unconstitutional, no sense. Rules, mandates, you can call it whatever you want. It's wrong. It's wrong. And you're the ones that are going to have to live with it. Thank you. Thank you. Atkins? So, Judge Zander, I know that you're a previous superintendent here. I don't agree with your contractual agreement. I think it's wrong. I think it's, I think we're what, triple dipping. Um, but I will ask you about the policy that you made that expressly prohibits those con conversations taking place that create personal relationships between students and teachers. That was your response to the Wells situation with Whitaker. Not was one person within that entire situation with your own investigation held accountable. As a matter of fact, you took one of those specific people and you gave him a promotion. And you moved him from the principal of Wells to the, secondary, or the uh, director of secondary education within this building. 
you gave him a promotion when he is a mandatory reporter, yeah. right? Mandatory reporter. Statute of limitations, there isn't one. There's no statute of limitations on that. A mandatory reporter did not report sexual relations between a child and a teacher. Multiple people reached out to this educator, this person, this principal at the Wells High School. There's no statute of limitations. I don't know how many times I need to say that, but I would really appreciate someone, DA, bringing charges up, and I would really like to see you investigated. 100% like to see you investigated. To see you back in this school makes me want to vomit in my mouth. I'll address that concern, okay, during the superintendent's report. I request my time be paused if he's going to be speaking. Continue. For you to be here is a disgrace and absolutely disgusting. You know what happened. You know this school district was sued for $2.5 million based on the neglect. They knew about it. They investigated for four months. She was charged in 2017. Reports were brought up to the Wells principal in 2016 by a custodial agent or worker, custodial worker, and teachers. Physical evidence, proof on social media, hence your policy. And you get that man a promotion? Now you rehired him as the principal of Battleborn Youth Academy. Who are you? What are you? Why are you here? Because you've done nothing but enable. And it is disgusting, absolutely disgusting. I hope you're gone soon. Well, school's been in session for just about a month now, and since the board never has a clue what's actually happening at the schools, here's a recap of what's actually been going on. Fully vaccinated teachers who are COVID positive are still teaching in our classrooms, even though vaccinated people have a higher virus count and are more contagious than unvaccinated people. So essentially they're spreading and causing outbreaks and everyone is standing around scratching their heads and blaming all the non-mask wearers, the masks that have zero effect and are proven to not filter viruses. Kids are being quarantined that have negative results after positive results where they have no symptoms. And we now know that only vaccinated people can be asymptomatic, but we don't test them. So why are we testing all athletes who aren't sick? Oh, that's right, because we're being told to by the corrupt government and the NIAA. Students are being threatened with expulsion for not wearing a mask. Parents are being told if their child does not wish to comply, they need to homeschool because online NNBA does not welcome students for non-compliance. That is option is only for people quarantining. We have dropped so far from where we were. Children are being pitted against each other and we have created nothing other than an unhealthy environment not suitable for learning just today. At Mountain View Elementary School, Mrs. Willis stood outside the principal and berated a nine-year-old child across the street for not having a mask on in public in front of everybody picking up their students. And that is unacceptable from any level of teaching at all. Their parents clearly sent that child up to that school to pick up their other sibling who's not freaking quarantining, by the way. And she waited across the street while she got screamed at. This is the environment that you guys have created for our children. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, it would really be freaking nice if they could keep a clipboard of who's quarantining, I don't know, in the office so that every parent with a quarantined child doesn't get called every single day wondering why their kids aren't at school. This is ridiculous. We have no method whatsoever. We've been doing this for almost two freaking years. Get it together. I stopped coming to these meetings when the other three were threatened and forced out. It was made abundantly clear in an Elko Daily interview that this district only cares about the money they get from the COVID relief acts. You don't care what the parents say. You don't care what the kids think. You don't care about anybody but the pocketbooks of the central office. They're going to make sure that we comply with the governor, aren't you guys? Or you're gonna risk losing our funds. Dear Lord, what would you have done without the COVID money or without COVID at all? 
apparently we had no idea we were barely surviving out here and single-handedly making sure the plexiglass industry thrives. And on another note, little birdie told me that a recall Time. is being started for any board member Time. that Thank isn't you. up for re-election next year. Time. But if you need any advice, I'm sure you can call that attorney that we pay over a thousand dollars a month Mercedes to Mindy. and see what he says if he's not too busy donating all his money to Sizzleac. Mercedes Mindy. Mr. Zander. Um, I'm here to address some concerns that I have about the submission process for the school board position that I encountered while applying. When I submitted my letter of intent and resume for consideration, I received a phone call letting me know they were in receipt of it. Less than 48 hours later, I received a text message from an Elko County employee who shared their disgust with what happened to me and said they were sorry my submission was rejected. As I had no idea what they were talking about, I simply responded with a text message stating I had not heard anything from the school district. As this conversation was awkward and uncomfortable, I didn't press for additional information. Why would somebody in the county know my business? Instead, I sent an email to Teresa Daystra <clears throat> in Ira Lines asking why my submission was rejected. When Teresa responded to me, she indicated that they were choosing applicants they felt were most qualified and thanked me for my interest. When I requested clarification as to why I didn't qualify for an interview, explaining that I should not have heard it from someone in the community, Teresa's response was that conversation in the community didn't warrant a response from the district. Well, yes, it does, Ms. Daystra. This is a public seat you are holding. You do not own this seat. You are an elected official. And the same people who put you on that seat are gonna be the same people that take you out of it. <laughs> You're a mother, a soccer coach, a community volunteer, as well as a life coach and financial manager. Let me tell you about myself, Ms. Daystra. I'm a mother, I'm a wife, I'm a professional musician. I am a teacher, music teacher. I'm a community volunteer. I have also performed at the Smithsonian, not once but twice, and I've performed for the Kennedy Center just a year ago. I work full-time for an expert witness preparing complex medical reports, and I work part-time for a family law attorney. I have worked in the district court preparing orders for guardianship compliance, uh, requiring knowledge of state statutes. I'm also a delegate for the Bass Club, and I said, <clears throat> uh, and I sit on the board of directors for a large Townhouse community complex in Miami, which required knowledge of Florida statutes in order to run the community property and stay properly and stay in the black. I currently sit on the Elko City Planning Commission, so I'm trying to understand how I would qualify for an interview. After going back and forth with no explanation, I rescinded my submission. Every single person who applied for this board position should have been interviewed without exception. What appears to be happening is some inappropriate cherry picking of applicants. One of the applicants who interviewed was already conflicted out the moment they applied. Another applicant, I specifically remember from high school and there are some serious issues which I cannot believe the school board would overlook. Knowing how these interviews have been conducted coupled with my personal experience in this process, I have no faith in the school board going forward, not now. Until the school board as a whole can stand against the tantrimonious threats coming from a certain Nevada school union pushing the will over policy and the politicization of policy, we are doomed. It is really quite stunning that Elko County once had some of the best schools in the nation. I would know because I attended those schools. I was born here. What's happening now isn't a teacher problem. This is a school board problem that has not affected good policy for teachers or students. Teachers are quitting in droves because y'all can't do your job and have the audacity to overlook applicants without even asking the hard questions. Certainly, this gets creed to my argument and makes it that much more infinitely so. Thank, Thank you. you. Speak on 301? 301. Okay, we'll have you speak on 301. Ira, would you like to read the one that was second? Yep. <clears throat> this was emailed in by uh, Scott McKelly. Hello, my name is Scott McKelly, and I'm a resident of Spring Creek. I'm not able to make it tonight, but still wanted to make my voice heard. I wanted to let you know about a situation that occurred in our home. I understand that so much is out of the board's control, but I think you guys should still be aware of it other families in your community and how they are dealing with the current situation. I'm a public school teacher. I have been for over a decade. My job is hard, but I have always managed and succeeded in public education system. This week I made the hard but correct choice to homeschool my kids. The plan that the board has approved does not provide a stable, emotionally safe learning environment for my kids. The constant changes of mask policy and staffing due to quarantine and exclusion have made my children into fearful and anxious children. I will not tolerate this. I understand that so much is out of our hands, but please do what you can to make a stable environment for our families that do have the option to homeschool and whose children 
or suffering emotional distress and like anything that we see in us a lot of our time. Thank you. Elementary, so I'm on. I'm here on her behalf as well as her kindergarten class. A lot of parents I've chatted with. Um, it is clear to me that voicing our opinions and frustrations about forced mandates on our kids is falling on deaf ears. So I'd like to take another approach: science. Science that proves the ineffectiveness and damaging effects that these cause socially, emotionally, and health-wise. <laughs> We have all been told the lie that masks work. We have been told to follow the science because science works. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's what I've done. After following some research, I have found that the size of a virus molecule is just one micron. While the size of a vapor from an e-cigarette is an average size of 60 microns. And if you're wondering why a vapor from an e-cigarette matters, it is because a surgical mask, much like what you're wearing, has holes with a size of 80 microns. The, sorry, she made me out of breath. <laughs> the cloth masks that, uh, also have holes with an average size of 500 microns. You don't have to be a scientist to know that this is the equivalent of trying to stop thrown sand with a chain link fence. And I have photos to further prove my point and these were not just taken randomly. These are from doctors. This is a pretty serious looking mask. This is a mask much like what you're wearing. The vapor escapes. There's nothing stopping this vapor. This is what we're telling our kids is keeping them safe. And if vapor can escape these masks, what's a virus? If it's one micron, vapor is 60. Of the 60 microns, um, so, and I can give you the doctor's names later if you'd like. This is physical, tangible evidence that demonstrates the ineffectiveness that the masks have. I have shown you that the masks fail, but let's talk about what they really do. Studies have shown that wearing masks for long periods of time causes masks to cut, um, build moisture from breath and sweat. This causes a bacteria buildup. This is what we're breathing in our lungs. Putting unnecessary stress on the immune system in which, surprise, surprise, we get sick. Also, carbon dioxide that our bodies are not designed to breathe. Studies have also shown particles of plastic and fibers from the masks that you are all wearing get lodged in the lungs. This is a foreign body. Hi. Thank you. And anybody else that wants to hear, I've got a lot of evidence here. Thank you. No freedom of speech when they have to cut you off. Nope. Okay, I have no one else? We'll move on to item 2.1, our superintendent's report. No, thank you. We already heard. We have somebody over here. She raised her hand, you looked at her. You looked right at me and then said, oh, I, I would be glad for you to come up and take your three minutes and then we will continue. Thank you. Right, and then you'll just move right on. Thank you. Thank you. Stupid bitch. Yep. <laughs> Julie Stevenson, and I figure I'll finish where she was going now. Not only do the mask hamper people's oxygenation, they hamper it so much that OSHA, who the supposed president has stated <coughs> is going to go ahead and start making all these mandates for all these companies, it actually violates their own regulations. It is also maintaining fluids, it is maintaining moisture, it is maintaining bacteria. Because the children feel like they can't breathe, they breathe deeper. 
So instead of the bacteria remaining in the upper portions of the lungs, it gets down into the lower lobes of the lungs and brings on bacterial pneumonia. And that is what we're seeing with a lot of children in the hospital. And they're calling it COVID-19 Delta virus. But when they actually start doing testing, they find it out, just like the Spanish flu, it's bacterial pneumonia. And we are causing it by forcing these children to wear these masks. OSHA puts employees on the job in certain areas with masks for a limited amount of time. And it's not ours. As a matter of fact, Dan, what is it? About 20 minutes? It depends on the environment. We're putting these children in masks six to eight hours and telling them at very, very young ages they have to keep this thing on and continue to breathe in contamination, bacteria, drop their oxygenation level, raise their CO2 level, do harm to their immune system, and then we wonder why we get sick. We're causing these children to get sick, and that doesn't count the psychological damage. We have children who have gotten to the point where they're terrified to be around other people. I can't go visit grandma because I'm going to kill her because that's what they've been told and not by their parents. They've been told that because they're being informed that from the schools and that's coming from you guys. Now, if you want to do something for the children of this county, you really need to start doing your own research and finding out what is and isn't science. Because this nonsense is not science. This is playing the governor's game. <coughs> Mountain View Elementary. Um, I'm sitting here listening to you guys. This is the first meeting I've ever been to, and hearing uh, what my son tells me about his teacher and what he's telling me about the principal. I'm looking at this stuff. You guys claim that you're following the governor's orders, and I'm wondering at what point personal responsibility <coughs> steps in and where, where you guys are going to do the right thing. We we think that following orders and such is a defense but we all have free will and you guys don't follow the will of the people it seems and I, I wonder at what point you guys will be held personally responsible for your part in this amen <laughs> thank you please come up my name is Kathy Christensen I have no children in school but I have grandchildren I am just wondering how much Elko County School District received from the CARES Act from the governor? An answer? Kathy, can you? I don't, I'm not sure the total amount. Um, the CARES Act didn't come from the governor, just to be clear, it came from the federal government. Was the last time there was well, with that? The federal government, we just, they stated earlier, they didn't take money from the right. federal government. No, it was nothing that was mass mandated. It was just. I want to know how much money you guys got from the CARES Act. I'm calling it that. I am for you. Can Elko be a constitutional county? It's all for sure. Yeah, I'm sure it's all for sure. From the CARES Act, SR1, we received $730,454. And where did that money go? I can tell you. We hired um, a transportation custodian to help with our buses because we knew that we had to put students in different seating arrangements. We put in a mental health contract to provide quality health to the Mental health because they have to wear masks? And they're told that, that they're subhuman. This is for our students. And then we also provided TV for our teachers because we knew that they would have to teach online. We purchased PPE for the schools. 
He also purchased air purifiers for the nurses' rooms and then for the classrooms with kindergarten, first through third, and our special education classrooms. And then since we had to go distance learning, a large portion of the funding went to provide hotspots for our families that didn't have Wi-Fi and then also computers. So I just think we have a laptop in here. Oh. But why did why were they why, why were they not in school? Our tax money pays for the schools, for the teachers, your wages. Why were they not in school? Why do you guys not get a backbone and stand up to the governor and tell him to kiss your ass? Amen. Mm -hmm. anyone. All right, please come on up. Hi, my name is Devin Baldwin, and I have three children currently enrolled in Spring Creek. Not for sure how long that's going to be, depending on how this keeps on going. Um, I just wanted to point out, I, I have two nieces and a nephew that go to school in South Dakota who have all had COVID last year, gone back to school. They were in school all last year without any mandates, without masks, without contact tracing, without all of that. South Dakota has one of the lowest COVID rates in the country. So the protocol when a child is exposed at their school is of course the child that's COVID positive goes home and quarantines. The children that have been around said child wear a mask for the seven to 10 days. So I'm kind of wondering why we aren't following states that have a lower COVID rate. Why are we not picking up things that's working for other states? You know, if it, and, and a lot of us in this room, if any of it made any kind of common sense, if it had a higher mortality rate, if the masks were proven to work, if everything you know made sense to all of us, we would have no problem following these. But we feel like everything is just falling on deaf ears. Like we don't have a voice, like we're not being heard. Mm -hmm. And our kids are the ones that are suffering. So I really hope that we can come together and maybe try to make a change because my kids are suffering. And I hate that I have to choose between their mental health and their academic health because I'm afraid that my kids' mental health will suffer very badly by being home and not being able to be around their peers. So I hope we can make a change. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're going to move on to 2.1, the superintendent's report. If the board doesn't comply with the parents, the board will be replaced. You just remember that. We'll be the ones to play the room. She's also a mandatory reporter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to get out of your way. <laughs> I think so. 